Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back, continuing on with my Kershaw collection of discontinued knives. Uh, right now, we're going to go ahead and continue on with the next set. Uh, I wanted to do like 20 knives all at once, but it looks like it's a little bit difficult to upload that many. So again, we're going to go ahead and try and keep this down to 20 minutes, so let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> This first one is called the Kershaw Boa. Many of you guys may have heard of this knife. It's been around between the years of, I'm going to say, 2000 to about 2009 at the very latest when this knife went away and disappeared. Uh, pretty much probably got replaced by the new line of Kershaw knives, Kershaw Cryo, and um, probably some others that I can't really recall, but this is one of the knives that was one of their premier uh, blades at the time in the early 2000s. The knife, once again, is designed by uh, Ken Onion. Once again, the Kershaw, the, the uh, classic um, cylinder thumb stud that we don't see anymore, they pretty much modified that design since then. Uh, but this one's the regular cylinder um, <clears throat> thumb stud, which is quite interesting because you can actually unscrew it and clip it on this side and make it a, like a left-handed knife. Uh, but you don't have the option of having the uh, pocket clip be tip up. You can, however, have it be uh, the tip down uh, version with the pocket clip there. Again, it's got these uh, cyclone um, sort of cylinder or cyclone um, <coughs> circles running throughout the theme on both the uh, the handle and on the knife. Uh, pretty interesting choice. The steel is S30V steel. Uh, once again, just another classic Kershaw or a classic Ken Onion design. Probably one of the things I'm not crazy about on this knife is the, where the flipper tab uh, is located. It is sort of kind of located kind of low on a knife, you notice. Usually you see the, the uh, flipper tab is usually up maybe a little bit higher, but they put it way down here. And secondly... The jimping on it is really aggressive. It's fairly sharp. I thought that they would have maybe been better if they, like, I don't know, maybe file that down a bit and not make it so aggressive, but it does kind of rip up the skin. Uh, another thing is the knife actually has a lock to prevent the spring assist from opening, something you don't see anymore, but I think it's because they put locks on the early knives because they really weren't quite sure um, if people might accidentally, you know have the knife open up and and you know there were maybe at that time they might have had like some controversy um as to whether or not uh spring assisted knives were safe i don't know but uh, apparently having a lock on the knife was uh you know important for them to have on these spring assisted blades and this is one of the knives that had the lock on it or it could just be a design choice i don't know uh but again you it's a knife that you're never going to see again or see the design of again. I do like the dots on it, though. Yeah, this model number of this knife um, is 1580, and the steel on it is a 60 v They came out in three versions of the knife. I have all three. Uh, this knife came out in s 60 v It also came out in s 30 v and then it also finally came out in CPM 440V, the multicolored, I call it the Joker knife. And you'll probably see that in the next set. So there you go. Ken Onion. Kershaw Boa. Classic. Moving on, we have another knife here that is still around today, although not this version of the knife. This is the Kershaw Knockout. Uh, this is a very, very limited edition. This knife is the brown has brown aluminum scales. It's the brown aluminum scale with Elmax black wash version of the knife. Uh, interesting thing with the thumb stud. Now we see that the thumb studs are changing to a different design again on the knife. Uh, these little details they did on these early knives, you can see a slight change in all the little things they did on these knives. You know, back then they probably didn't would have noticed it, but these days, you know, the way knives look now, it's very noticeable. The knife also came, uh, it also came with a subframe lock, hence the name Knockout. 
that's how it got its name. They actually knocked out a piece of the aluminum scale to fit the uh, the subframe lock uh, right in there. It's also the only knife in the entire Crusher lineup that is a subframe lock. They never made another one again with the subframe lock. Sometimes companies do that. They put a design out and maybe they just forget about it or it gets overlooked. Who knows? Uh, this time the flipper tab is located a little bit better. Uh, it's a little bit higher on the knife, which I kind of liked because the boa, if you can see, see how much lower it is on the knife. It's just a little interesting and quite weird, but yeah. So the Kershaw LMAX, uh, brown aluminum version of the subframe lock, model number 1870BWB. Uh, BRN for uh, black wash brown version. And you can see right there it's LMAX. You will not find one of these. Uh, it's just really rare. They release these in very limited quantities. I'm not even sure how many of these knives they released. All these knives that I have in my collection are brand new in boxes. Uh, the old Kershaw boxes. Uh, if you guys are familiar with it or maybe you're not familiar with it, uh, they all came out in like this sort of gray with the American flag on them. I collected every one of these or as many of these knives as I could, all brand new in their boxes. So, yeah, it's the Kershaw Storm, or sorry, the uh, Kershaw uh, Knockout. Uh, this one, by the way, came in the red box, so, but I figured it was still a discontinued model, so therefore I had to have it in the collection. Moving on, we have the, uh, a, another, I call this a, uh, Kershaw Surprise Collectible, because a lot of people didn't know it was a collectible. The name of this knife, uh, you guys have heard of the Kershaw, or the Benchmade Barrage, well, you guys are currently looking at the very rare Kershaw Barrage. Not very many people knew about this knife. It's a very, very rare collectible. They only made 412 of these were ever made. And they were made exclusively for Walmart and, at, uh, and to be sold in Walmart stores only. So when they came out with this knife in 2009, uh, knowing that they only made 412, not knowing that they only made 412 of these, uh, as soon as they got wind of it, everybody bought every one of these, and uh, they they just, yeah, they, they bought every one of the, uh, the Kershaw barrages, and they just disappeared as quickly as they went into the stores. Uh, the original name for this knife, because this knife comes in two versions, it also comes in a silver version, which I also have. It's called the Kershaw Salvo. Uh, but if you look at this knife, you can see that this knife is almost like an early version of the Kershaw Leak, or at least a different version of the Kershaw Leak. This is a manual knife. It's also slightly larger than the Kershaw Leak uh, that, you, that we both know now and we're so very familiar with. Um, the only thing about this knife is that the thumb studs on the knife, while they are spaced properly for deployment, you can't really get good purchase on it. It's actually a little bit difficult because the thumb studs are so tiny. It probably would have been better to make it a flipper knife, but that did not happen on this model. They kept it a thumb stud knife, and, you know, that's the design that they chose. So, again, this is a frame lock knife. The steel on this knife is 14C28N. Uh, that was the most common steel in Kershaw back between that period of 2000 to about 2009. 14C28N was it. Higher end steels in those days were 440P, uh, 440C, uh, S60V, those kinds of steels. Those were considered the high end steel. And of course, uh, S30V was also considered a high end steel back at that time. So. Yeah, the Kershaw Barrage, long gone, no longer around. The next knife that I'm going to bring out is another knife uh, that I love and a lot of people actually bought. This is called the Kershaw Lahar. Uh, I don't know who designed this knife, but the steel on it is another interesting steel. It's a Japanese-made knife. Um, the knife is made in Japan, I think or put together in Japan, it says Japan right on it, unless they mean that it would probably be uh, Japanese uh, st 
steel uh, VG-10. I'm not quite sure, but I think because, you know, Kershaw, you know, made in America, so I'm assuming they're talking about the Blade VG-10. Um, yeah, this is the Kershaw Lahar. It's a manual folder. Um, pretty good action. Um, the flipper tab works really well on it. Um, it has, yeah, really nice action. I think the only thing wrong with my knife, personally, you know, my particular knife is that it's off-centered, as you guys can see. I might take it over to Kershaw and have them fix that for me. I don't know, but, uh, either way, the action's fairly smooth. Uh, yeah, again, the steel's VG-10. The scales are, uh, G-10 also. Just a really nice knife. Really like the um, black wash pocket clips they had back at that time. Um, really nice choice. Makes it look very, very classic. Um, really pretty. So it's sort of like a drop point blade, I guess. So maybe a modified drop point, I'm assuming. Really very pretty. So moving on to the next knife. Uh, this is a Ken Onion design once again. I'm sure you guys know all about this one. This is the Kershaw Blur, but you guys never saw this version. This is the Ken Onion Kershaw Blur with the Tech Trek and all aluminum scales with a subliner lock. On the uh, Kershaw Knockout, we have the uh, subframe lock. This is the subliner lock, as you can see. Uh, really interesting knife to have in the collection. I had to have it. The steel on it is SG2. And you can see that it's sort of a composite blade uh, knife, as you can see right there. I believe the top part of the knife was D2, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the bottom part is SG2. So I might be wrong about it being D2 on the top, but it is definitely an SG2 steel. So really nice. Again, with the... Uh, pocket clip on there classic black wash color i love that look and again um something that is interesting with the thumb studs on this knife at this point in time ken onion designed the thumb studs to be angled on this knife as you guys can see uh so that you wouldn't have to because it's the only way for you to open the knife, he wanted to make sure everybody would have really good purchase. And basically, you just take your thumb and you push upward rather than around and out like you would with most thumb stud knives. And of course, the spring assist on the knife would actually help you to uh, open it easily. So there you have it, the uh, Blur, Kershaw Canyon Blur and SG2 Steel. So a lot of these knives I collected because the steel was a steel I'd never seen before. Uh, so you may see several versions of the same knife over and over again with maybe a different steel on it, a different handle color, um, so on and so forth. The This next knife was one of the ones that I needed to get. And there was no way I could get it, but I, I was lucky enough to find someone on eBay that actually listed it, and he should not have. And this is an automatic knife. This is the Kershaw Breakout. Really, really fantastic automatic knife. I had to have this one because I wanted to compare it to the Kershaw Launch series of knives that they have today. Um, what I love about this knife is that this knife actually has a lock on it. Uh, like the Kershaw Rogue you saw in the first set of knives that I did, this one also has a lock. However, unlike the Rogue, the lock's actually on the back of the knife as opposed to on the front where it is on the Kershaw Rogue. Now, this knife, again, reminds me of the Kershaw Leak, the shape of the blade, the thinness of the, of the knife. However, this knife is incredibly light. Uh, it's all, uh, all aluminum scales. Uh, interesting choice for the back with the pivot. It's so gigantic on the back, and yet on the front, it's very small. Uh, the design on the knife is where the name comes from, the Kershaw Breakout, sort of like breaking glass, I guess. Really like that design. Uh, this knife has to probably weigh maybe about two ounces because it feels like I'm not even holding a knife. It's so light in my hand. Uh, the action on this piece is real snappy. I mean, it just pops fires, rocket fires right out of there. Uh, the lock is pretty fantastic. 
basically, you just take the lock here and then you push it up. And then you won't be able to deploy the knife. Uh, yeah, again, it's, it's one of the things that I think are necessary on an automatic knife, some kind of safety. The Kershaw Launch Series, which I like a lot, uh, they, they decided not to put safety locks on their automatic knives. I think that's wrong, but that's the way they decided to go with it. To justify it, they did what was called a recessed uh, button. On, the, on their automatic knives with the launch series, meaning that you'd have to actually press it all the way down hard in order to, to deploy the knife. That still does not stop the knife from firing in your pocket. I think a lock would be a much better option uh, for safety. So, so there you have it, the Kershaw Discontinued Collection uh, Part 2. I'm going to be right back with another set of knives. Like I said, I have 30 of these discontinued knives. I'm going to go through each and every one of them. It's going to talk about them real casually and kind of see if I can remember why I liked them and why I collected them and what was the reason for me having them at that time. So there you go. Uh, this is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off. I'll be back with another video. Looks like I made it under the 20 minutes. Uh, I hope this video has been quite interesting for you. For anyone out there that's looking to collect Kershaw collectibles, you can probably find every one of them or one that you're looking for uh, on these videos. That's another reason why I decided to go ahead and do this. Um, so, again, this is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off, hoping you will be happy trying to hunt down all these because at this point in time, you may not find all of them and I'm certainly not going to get rid of any of mine. So this is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off saying sayonara and I will be back for the third set probably in a few minutes if I can get my energy back. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and God bless.